Welcome back everyone. Today we have another procedural effect inside of Maya. One for abstract procedural thing. So let's get into it. So I'm going to take a simple plane to start off with. And uh, this is where we are going to be creating those displacements. And uh, let's add a new material to this. Start surface. And let's call this abstract. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a bit more subdivision to this, maybe around 60 and 60. That should be good enough to play around with. And uh, let's go into the hypershade and let's take abstract. Right, so this is what we have. Now there are a few things that we can do uh, for the displacement. Now there are a lot of different noises in Maya that you can use. You have AI noise, cell noise as well. Now here you'll find something called as a volume noise. Uh, the good thing about the volume noise is you'll find noise type and here you can find different types of noise pattern like wispy, space time, below and Perlian noise, volume waves and so on. So I'm going to go with, with this kind of pattern, something like this and uh, I'm going to add a color correction node just so we can have more control in this and I'm going to attach the color to the input here. There you go. Now in the volume noise, you can also add a bit more depth here. I'm going to keep it to default 3, but if you want, you can simplify this as well. And you can increase this as well. I think I'm going to go for something like maybe a 1. Since this is looking way better, you can increase more ratio into this. A bit more frequency ratio. You have to have more depth for this kind of frequency. To play around with frequency, I'm going to keep it to simple 1. And then you can change the time to have different patterns here something like this if you're not happy with one result and you can add more scale into this you can implode this explode this totally up to you so we have already played a lot of time with the volume noise apart from that let's get into the color correct and let's first see how this is overall reacting to the displacement part so i'm going to attach this to the displacement and let's quickly see how this is reacting to the overall scene i'm going to get into the ipr and let's take the ipr and also a physical sun and sky so this displacement is going crazy with this. Let's select our plane, go to attribute, Arnold, and in the displacement attribute, I'm going to make the overall height to maybe like 0.1 and turn this on. Okay, let's add uh, a bit more character here for the subdivision too. We can change the total subdivision type. I'm going to go for something even less, maybe like 2.0. You see how the displacement is going on. Alright, so we have something like this. I'm gonna add a bit more subdivision here. Alright, so we have something like this. Alright, so time to add a bit more better result to the overall subdivision and uh, a bit more displacement patterns as well. So the first thing I'm gonna do is let's increase the overall scale here. Let's make it five, five, and five, and uh, attach this here. And in the color correct action, let's disconnect this. And uh, decrease the gamma bit, add a bit more exposure here, something like this, and attach this again to this. Okay, let's go with the IPR again. Let's add a render region. Alright, so let's take a linear subdivision maybe. And uh, let's add a bit more subdivision to the original plane just so it will have a better result with this. Alright, so this looks good. Uh, although the subdivision is still a bit, uh, sorry, the displacement is a bit too much. So I'm going to go for something like 0, 1, 0. And yeah, there we go. So let's uh, quickly take this as uh, something like this, add a bit more some film here, some coat, some roughness into this. Alright, so this looks good. I'm going to quickly take a simple camera and quickly zoom in. Something like this and switch this to the camera again. Let's zoom in. And bring this out. Let's change the resolution to maybe like a more reasonable 1k square. That will be a bit more nicer. Alright. Let's pause this. 
Alright, so this looks pretty good. Although we have to do tweak some settings here, I'm gonna add some more samples and exposure into our sky dome light. Although we are not going to be using sky dome light, we can simply use a different HDR. But this is good for the visualization purpose. Let's go into our overall abstract here. And from here, you can go back to your displacement, add a bit more subdivision into this. The more subdivision you have, the more good result or better result you're going to get. But obviously, at the cost of render time, so be careful with that. So I'm going to reduce the displacement a bit. Okay, this looks good. I'm going to go for something like 5. Okay, so I really like this look. So let's uh, remove the skyroom light and uh, let's take a simple area light. Bring this up, rotate this to something like this and bring this somewhere about here. Okay, let's turn this up. Increase the exposure, maybe like 12. Okay. Have more of these. And if you want, you can add volume into this scene. And I'm going to use a different HDR for the lighting purpose, but if you want, you can take the area light as well. Also, you can go for maybe a direction light. And in the channel, let's increase the exposure like 10 and also the angle to complete full. All right, so select this, rotate this. To somewhere about this and from here reduce the exposure all right okay from here if you don't like the overall color or anything from this point you can increase the metalness to complete one and you can also reduce the base color to complete zero if you don't want it and in the thin film you can go here and change a different color if you want all right so I'm going to go for a different HDR, maybe a neon from my own HDR pack. All right, so I'm using uh, a simple HDR from one of my own pack. If you don't have this, you can get this on Gumroad. And if you can't get this, you can simply go into the Google and find tons of different free HDRs uh, that will work the same way. All right. So I'm going to increase my exposure. Let's give more samples so we have much cleaner look. And let's add a bit more into the speckler since we have some amount of speckler going on and uh, from here you can just play around with your HDR to see what kind of look you're going for and uh, for me this looks pretty good to me so I'll rotate it just a bit more and from here let's zoom in all right so this looks pretty good to me it was really fun and amazing way to create this kind of abstract look and you can have fun with this try different noises try different patterns to have fun with this um, if you don't like this, you can always go back into the hyper shade and select your noise and change the different type. Maybe the den density, the spottiness to maybe like 0.2 and so on. And just have fun with this. Alright, so that's it for this one and I'll see you in the next video.